Hello. Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, we're here to welcome you to the session this evening to talk more about Outward Bound and discovering the secret sauce of what makes Outward Bound special. Um, first off, we'd like to talk about uh, our land acknowledgement for our common ground that we have. We are here today to discuss the magic that makes Outward Bound Canada special. Part of that is the unique spaces in which our programs take place. From coast to coast, we travel through lands that continue to be stewarded by Indigenous peoples and have been since time immemorial. We are so fortunate to get to partner with several nations and communities. However, we also acknowledge our shared colonial history and our team is committed to reconciling relationships with the first peoples of the land. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, my name is Pete Smolders and I'm the head of Western Canada. Um, I've been working for Outward Bound since 2016 and I've been involved in outdoor education since well, about 1995, so uh, quite a bit of time. So I'm really happy to be here with these folks tonight. And I'm Laura Hood and I've been involved with Outward Bound off and on since, um, well, for almost 20 years, working mostly in the admissions department. Uh, with Outward Bound Canada, but been involved with outdoor education for um, pretty well all of my career. Um, and we're super happy to be with you tonight and to talk with you more about Outward Bound Canada. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to take a look. So what is it about Outward Bound Canada that, that makes us special? Who are we? Who are, who, what is Outward Bound Canada? Well, one thing we are is we're a not-for-profit charity and we um, are a national organization. So we run programs coast to coast with, with the Outward Bound. We have um, programs going out. We work mostly with, mostly with youth um, between the ages of 14 and 19, but we also work with adult groups as well. Um, we have programs running in BC, in Alberta, in Ontario, and we have some programs running this year in Atlantic Canada as well, but we have worked in many places across Canada over the years. We've been running programs since 1969, so for over 50 years, we've been delivering programs, inspirational programs to mm -hmm. youth um, right across Canada. Um, yeah, and uh, I think um, you know you're here this evening for our for our open enrollment courses. But we work with schools and, and different community groups all across the country. So there's various ways that we that we can get kids out on an outward bound course. Mm -hmm. uh, what makes outward bound different? Well, that's a that's a great question, and I'd really like to walk you all you folks through it and and tell you a, a bit of our secret. Yeah. Our Bound Canada is the only national outdoor education company in Canada. We offer exciting trips in amazing locations across the country. Your child has the opportunity to choose one of those courses that is the perfect length of time, level of challenge, and a place and activity that really interests them. Whether it's on the West Coast, where Laura and I are tonight, we're on Vancouver Island this evening, um, or in the Rocky Mountains, uh, the deep, dark, Wilderness of Northern Ontario or in right in Toronto. Our programs are completely immersive. They are definitely not a guided trip where everything gets done for you. Your child gets to experience and participate in all facets of our expedition. Our groups come together from all over the world and they get to work through the four phases of group development on every course. We'll see the awkward formation of a group transition quickly to a place of comfort and understanding as people get to know each other. Program participants will be challenged by the instructors to deal with group and individual decisions and conflict every day while on course. That inevitably leads them, leads the group to a place where they are largely self-sufficient, understanding and understanding what needs to be done to achieve the goals set in front of them, whether it's making it over a high mountain pass or navigating rapids on a river. Uh, next slide, please. Through these unique challenges, we'll see every course to a successful end. At Outward Bound, we work within the group to understand the level of challenge that specific group that specific group requires, while taking info 
taking into consideration each individual and providing tailored personal challenges for your child. This is all prepared and facilitated by our amazing instructional teams across the country. Our instructors come with industry leading certifications, unique individual personal paths, coupled with the desire to provide a life changing experience to each and every participant while being supported by our logistical and risk management teams. We monitor all of our groups across the country 24 seven by satellite communication and tracking, satellite communication and tracking in order to provide the safest possible backcountry experience for your child. So one of the great things um, about Outward Bound Canada, we are a not-for-profit charity. So we do have a lot of amazing um, people and organizations that donate to Outward Bound. And um, as a result of that, some of our donors have set up scholarship and bursary programs for us. So we do have a youth access fund to help support um, students who financially wouldn't be able to participate. Um, and it is based on financial need. Um, that is certainly easy to apply for. There's lots of information on our website or you can call the admissions department and talk to someone about our youth access fund and it um, services students coast to coast. So anybody is able to apply for that. We also have a strong scholarship program and that will be built out as the year goes on. At the moment, we have um, a scholarship program for youth of military families. And in the past, we've had lots of scholarships for Indigenous participants and for various various organizations might set up um, scholarships specifically for particular youth, whether it's from a particular region or a particular um, community of people. So we're always updating that scholarship and bursary site as well. So you can take a look at our website or, or give us a call in admissions and we can talk you through what's available for scholarships and bursaries. High school credit. So one of the great other great things about Outward Bound is that we do offer a high school credit. We yeah. are an accredited school. We do have a principal and we offer Ontario um, high school credits on some of our programs. So we have a three week high school credit program in Toronto um, running out of the Brickworks in Toronto. It's a three week program and the credit that's available on that is the grade 10 healthy active living credit. We do have the grade 12 healthy active living credit and that's available in any of our 21 day courses. So our three week courses and that happens, the, the grade 10 credit is only available on the Toronto course that's running in the Brickworks. The grade 12 credit is available. We have a 21 day program in BC. It's a sea kayaking and surfing. It's the three week sea kayaking and surfing adventure. The Rocky Mountain ultimate three week backpacking adventure. Ontario Wilderness, we have a three-week canoeing. We have adventure there as well. This year, I think that's going out in Georgian Bay. Yeah, I believe so. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then on our 32-day leadership trip, we have, uh, it's a grade 11 leadership and peer support um, credit that's available on that one. So lots of, lots of um, opportunities to get a high school credit while you're doing an Outward Bound course this summer. So adding all the ingredients together, wow. After an Outward Bound adventure, you'll be more confident and a stronger leader. And that's, we certainly hear that again and again and again from, um, from parents and from participants after they've completed their Outward Bound course. They, they talk about it like it is life-changing. Um, you know, the growth and development they've had, the resilience they've developed, the leadership qualities that come through. We've had lots of students, um, you know, go on to, um, you know, succeed in a great many things and, and really accredit that to their trip with Outward Bound and how much they learned about themselves and about communication skills. We do more than, um, you know, taking students out on an adventure trip. We do a lot of social emotional learning as well when we're out on course. So they're learning things like conflict re resolution, leadership development skills, um, you know, little, little tricks about themselves too. You know, what, what makes me special and who am I and and um, and really drawing on those special pieces of themselves and and learning to work as a team together with other people and and 
how to make those connections. So all of those things together on the Outward Bound course um, provide really an adventure of a lifetime to students. You know, I was thinking, Laura, you know, you mentioned that we've been around since 1969. And I think one of the neat parts of about Outward Bound Canada is that we, we have a really strong alumni uh, presence and uh, from, from people that, that come back and, and they talk to us and they tell us how how transformational their their outward bound course was for their life, you know, and all the way back to the, those first courses, you know, um, in 1969. Yeah. And that's those are really neat and uh, really neat stories to hear. And, uh, it, and it never it, it never really changes. It's just like, yeah, this is uh, this this helped me chart my course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is challenge by choice with, with an outward bound course, you're going on an adventure, you're going to be doing things outside of your comfort zone, you're going to be challenging yourself. They're designed to be challenging, both physically and emotionally challenging. You know, there will be days when you're out on course and you wonder, why did I do this? <laughs> why did I come out here? It's been raining for three days. And then, you know, something will happen, you'll get to the top of a mountain and you'll summit and the clouds will part and you'll see a beautiful vista or, you know, someone on your team helps you out of a situation or, you know, you successfully create a perfect meal you know, that night that you work with the group towards. So as all those things come together and make some really special moments. And and lifelong friends too. I think mm -hmm. that's, you know, yeah. people talk about their relationship. We, we've even got, we've had people that have gone on to get married together. And that's yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a special time for, for everybody in the group. Yeah, for sure. It's, um it is, it is really special. And those friendships do last quite a long time. We have a lot of alumni that still get together with their own. Yeah. And on trips together. So new this year. So we talked a little bit about the high school credit courses that we have. We have running out in BC. We have some um, one week backpacking courses going out. We have uh, seven day sea kayaking courses, 14 day sea kayaking courses, and the 21 day course is a sea kayaking and surfing course that mm -hmm. are going out and that's um on the on the west coast so most of those sea kayaking ones run off of vancouver island in clackwick sound area yeah so, by Tapino. Mm -hmm. yeah so you would fly into the comox airport and then head over to Tapino from there the backpacking ones are on the mainland so that's in the pemberton yeah area. Uh, yeah just outside like near whistler yeah that area mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the Rocky Mountains, we have new this year. It's a two-week whitewater canoe expedition. It's going to be fantastic. With yeah, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, the, uh, the, the. I'm really excited about this course. You know, on in two weeks, they'll be on uh, the the students will be on three different rivers with the the, the culminating the the final part of the expedition being on the Kootenai, um, and that uh, that that's a that's a beautiful mountain river that flows through Kootenai National Park. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's it, it promises to be a very exciting opportunity uh, that's that's brand new to the Rockies Camel Office. So. Mm -hmm. uh, then moving, oh, and also in um, Rocks, we have our traditional Rocky Mountain backpacking trips. So mm -hmm. we have seven days, fourteen days, and twenty-one days running in the Rockies as well, and that's in the Canmore area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then yeah, yeah, we I think we talked about the high school credit. You know, the three week courses. Yeah, yeah we can get high school credit on the three week courses too. Yeah. And then moving over into Ontario, um, we have a new uh, three week canoeing adventure happening this year that's um, happening in Georgian Bay. And we all well, we have two new trips actually going out in um, in Ontario this year. One is in the Georgian Bay area and one is going over into the Kippewa region in Quebec, doing the Tuk Tuk Loop over in Quebec, which is a fantastic flat water trip that we're doing. And then we have the 32 day leadership trip, which is a whitewater canoeing mm -hmm. expedition. Um, that one's going to be fantastic. That's going to be really well. good. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have um, we have seven days and 14-day uh, canoe adventures happening in um, Ontario as well. And we work in the Algonquin Park region and in the Halliburton Highlands for a lot of those courses as well. And up in Tomogamy too, I think, sometimes. Yep, yeah. up in yeah. Tomogamy too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So lots of regions in Ontario to explore with, with canoeing, both with the flat water and the white water canoeing that's happening there. Yeah. Um, and then staying in Ontario, we have, um, we also have programs running out of the Brickworks. So we have um, day programs that run. One is the high school credit course that we talked about, which is a three-week program coming during the day, Monday to Friday. And then we have Monday to Friday um, uh, 
programs as well. We have some focused on canoeing. We have mm -hmm. some focusing on building campcraft. We have some focusing on climbing. So lots of different opportunities there um, running out of the Brickworks if you're looking for a day program in the Toronto region. Yeah, it's such a great place to hang out, the Brickworks. I love going there. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. yeah. So how to apply? So applying is really easy. It happens on our website. So if you visit our website, outwardbound.ca, you can go to our course finder and you can check out all the courses that we have. It gives a description of each course. Um, you can choose apply now or um, enroll now, I think it says, and mm -hmm. click on that through and it'll take you through to our registration portal. And in the registration portal, you can create an account. You can put all your family members in there who are, you know, all the kids that you have that are wanting to participate <laughs> on courses and um, fill in all the forms that we have. We have a medical form and some other forms that we're asking you some questions to get to know you a bit better and understand your um, your child. And um, then we can follow up and, and ask some questions um, with you. Once you submit your application, admissions will be contacting you and we'll reach out and set up a time for a phone conversation where we can talk more in depth about the program and um, answer any more questions that you have and ask some questions that we may have to understand and get to know you and your child a little bit better. Your, um, your team does such a great job of troubleshooting, you know, those those technical glitches that sometimes happen um, and, and, and answering questions. And I think it's they do such a good job. Doing. Mm -hmm. And when you apply, there is a deposit, a non-refundable deposit that um, you put down, but then you can set up a payment plan after that. If you're wanting to apply for a scholarship or a bursary, um, and if you get to the payment portion, you can just reach out to the admissions department and we'll talk you through the rest of it and, and get that set up. Um, and there is a, an area to apply online for scholarships and bursaries as well. Oh, that's what I just talked about. <laughs> so there is a, a, a scholarship. There are separate applications. There is an application for our Youth Access Fund Bursary Program. And there is different applications for each of the different scholarships that we would be offering. And information on that is online on our website as well. And when you click through and are feeling like choosing the course that you want, you can also choose the scholarship or the bursary mm -hmm. that you're interested in applying to as well. And the form for that will come up in the registration portal and you can fill in that information too as you're applying. Okay, questions. Questions, yeah. That was great. Thank you, Laura and Pete. Um, if you guys want to maybe jump on camera so that people can see your lovely faces as we answer their questions. Um, <laughs> We're not all together <laughs> in the same room. <laughs> um, we do have a bunch that have streamed into the Q&A box over the course of um your lovely presentation but if anyone has others um and if anyone has you know additional questions as we start to go through them please feel free to drop them in that q a box at the bottom of your screen and we will try to get to as many as we can um the first question is about the solo um are there instructors nearby that sounds really intimidating so maybe uh, pete do you want to talk through how the solo Part of our courses works yeah absolutely so you know um solo is um it's probably we the, we probably get the most feedback about solo there's the that that initial nervousness you know every year about solo and then once folks have actually you know participated and said that was the coolest experience ever so uh, you know on our on our you know our, as, as everybody knows our courses you know range from 7 to 32 so our we 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 always try to have that solo experience for those students. So, um, and it can be upward. It could be half a day. It could be twenty four hours. Um, and to to answer your question, the instructors are there, um, very close, and 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 are checking in on the students, you know, all the time. But also trying to give them as much space as possible to have that solo experience. And this really is where challenge by choice comes into it we we want to understand somebody's personal kind of comfort level with doing this opportunity we want everybody to try to do it um but so we can we can put students that are you know more nervous closer to the instructors we create you know a, a safe container for them to have that experience yeah 
So when you're on solo, mm -hmm. the students will be spread out and ideally they won't be able to see or hear anyone else in the mm -hmm. group. Realistically, mm -hmm. you know, they may be able to see someone around the band or around the park, but it won't be within easy communication distance. So the idea is to have a, a totally solo experience where you're on your own. Yeah. They will also have a whistle. So when they start their outward bound program, right at the beginning, everyone's given a whistle so that they can blow that whistle anytime they need support. So on solo, if they do need something, and students have often asked me, did you ever need to blow your whistle? And yes, I did <laughs> need to blow my whistle when I was on solo because I got dropped off and forgot my water bottles. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you know, they were able to come back. But that whistle is your um, sort of your connection. And the instructors will place everyone strategically so they'll be somewhat in the middle so that they'll be able to hear a whistle blown if ever, it, if, you know, if someone needs it. And they will go around and check. If the students are out for a long period of time, like overnight, yeah. the instructors do go out and check on those students right. periodically. Yeah. They're not left totally on their own for that particular time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hopefully that answered your question. Can't hear you, Sarah. I think by this point, in terms of virtual work environments, everyone would be used to muting and unmuting, but alas. Um, it looks like there's a couple questions on this slide. Um, someone wanted to know, what what's transference? What's what's that all about? Great question. So I, I mentioned it um, when, when we were going through the slides. Um, you know, a, an easy way for us to describe it is um, a lot of the instructors will say, by the, by the end of the program, you'll have worked me out of the job. So the, the students on a course will have learned all of the skills that it that that need that they need as a group to navigate through to the end of the course. So ideally, it, it's not a guided trip. Outward Bound is a, as I mentioned, is a very immersive thing. And they they will have the opportunity to do that. So we the you know the the instructors could easily lead the group through all, you know, right to the end of the course, but that's not the intention of Outward Bound. The intention is that they take over, they learn that they gain that personal capacity of I can be a great leader and and uh, I can I can work with my work with my my peers and 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 get to a common goal. Yeah. That's what transference is. And that's the difference about outward bound is that we do have a curriculum. Yeah. It's not as Pete said a guided tour where the, our instructors are just taking the students out for you know a paddling and learning those kind of skills. There there is a curriculum to what we do and these. The students are participating in it. So there is a uh, the duty Rasta. So everyone takes mm -hmm. part. Yeah. So um, each student will have the opportunity to be maybe leader of the day or maybe in charge of um, the meals and the cooking that day. So they'll be- Someone will have to do dishes. Someone will have to do dishes. <laughs> Someone will be in charge of setting up the site. That's so right. when they yeah. arrive at the site, and it is, the other thing to remember about an outward bound course mm -hmm. is it is a journey. So they will be continuously moving from place to place. And as they go, they'll be, setting up camp, taking down camp the That's next right. day. And, yeah. you know, it's all, you're always on the move. You're not staying in one place for any amount of time. And, you know, the students will be learning those skills. So at the beginning, the instructors are really hands-on, mm -hmm. teaching those skills, making sure that everybody understands. And as the trip progresses, the instructors start to back off and the students start to come up and, you know, learning those skills. And so then maybe a it comes to dinner time and the instructors don't have to say, hey, it's dinner time, you know, let's unpack the food. Yeah. The students just do it automatically and yeah. they know that it's their turn. They jump up and they start, you know, getting everything ready for the meal or they'll arrive at the site and immediately who's ever on, you know, setting up site duty yeah. will just jump up and start, you know, taking things out without any prompting, without any that's right. direction yeah. from the instructors. So that's what the transference is, that transference of knowledge from the instructors to the participants on the course. Yep. Yeah. Does that make sense? Great. Uh, next question is, my child struggles to make friends and finds it hard to persevere sometimes. Do you think this program would be really hard for him? You want to answer that one? Hmm. Um, I don't, hard is such a funny term. Um, so a lot of people struggle to make friends. Um, one of the great things about Outward Bound, if you're coming on one of our summer expeditions, is that everybody's new. Everybody's starting from the same place. Um, they'll be coming in not knowing anybody else. Everybody's going to be nervous. And one of the great things about our instructors is they're really good at facilitating communication. And we don't have, um, we discourage 
um, you know, pairing up or, you know, people always being together in a canoe yeah. or, you know, always being in the same tent together. Um, everybody works with a different partner every day. Everybody gets to know each other. It's very much a group situation and everyone's depending on each other, you know, to make it through the trip and to make it through the journey and to support each other. So in that way, it's, it's a lot easier to make connections with people because you're, you're relying you're, on it. Yeah. 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 You're relying on each other. The masks are down. <laughs> you're your true person and yeah. you're allowed for your own personality to shine through. And, you know, everybody's had a hard day, you know, and everybody's there together. Yeah. Um, so, so it, it it's unexpected, the, the deepness of those connections that mm -hmm. can be made on yeah. an hour bound course. All right. Next question is, does the age range count my age as of application date or the beginning date of the program? I'm asking this because I'm currently 19 and would turn 20 before the program start. So the age calculation is the age you are turning by the end of the year. So if you are, if a, if a program is for, as in your case, 19 year olds, um, if you are turning 19 within that year, if you're turning 20 within that year, then we can have a conversation about that. But yeah. Um, you know, we can, we can take a look at that. So we'll take a look at, and, and this is what we, um, always do is we take a look at the group profile of you. So, um, as a 19 year old turning 20, um, and if everybody else on the course is, you know, 15 or 16, um, we'll talk about how comfortable you are with that, but it, it we are welcoming and open to everybody, but yeah. it's based, the, the registration process is based on your age within that year. So if you're turning 19 within the year and the program is for 16 to 19 year olds, um, that's what they're looking at. They're looking at your age within that year. Did that answer the question? I think so. And if, if you need any more clarification, um, please, you know, feel please free to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah, or email us um at admissions at outwardbound.ca and we can also talk more specifically. Yeah. Um somebody else is asking, uh, is there a big difference between one and three week courses? You, yeah, big difference. I'm not sure if there's a big difference. I mean it's uh, there's uh you get an opportunity to uh to do more things on a three week course. I mean, often like a, like a, like a seven day sea kayak, a week long course, you know, sea kayaking course, we will go to the same places. Um, but you'll get to, with a three week course, you get more opportunity to uh, visit different places. And you also get to work on some of those skills a little more deeply too on a longer course. So, yeah, yeah I think that's probably the biggest difference. You know, there's, there's more things to do. There's more time to do those things. So, and yeah. you and you bond with your group more mm -hmm. yeah. the longer that you're out here. There with a with a seven day course, um, you know, you you're you're getting a taste of everything, but it's it's a it's a taste of everything. When yeah. you have a twenty one day course, you're getting the full curriculum and you're really diving deep into what we do and and you're gonna be challenged because you yeah. know you're it's twenty one days every year. So chances yeah. are you're gonna get rained on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, you know, you're gonna be able to go a little bit further in your journey and and go to places. Like if you're Absolutely. doing a backpacking yeah. adventure, then you know there's there's yeah. more to do. It's really what it's really what you want to do. What what uh, mm. it comes down to, as I mentioned, is like that length of course is where you feel that you are at, uh, or or your child is at, as far as a level of challenge and level of yeah. level level of time away. Yeah, so. and we often get yeah. students who start on the seven day course because they're a little unsure of what they want to do if this yeah. is for them, and then they come down around and then they come back and they do a 14 mm -hmm. day and then they come back and they do a 21 day and then yeah. they do a leadership and then maybe go on to our outward bound training academy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, we have a lot of students that, that go that route and end up being outward bound instructors with us too, which yeah. is fantastic. Yeah, that's really neat to see. Yeah. Um, all right, on to the next question we've got here. So someone's clearly been poking around on our website and they saw that um, we don't allow cell phones on course. Why is that? Um, what do we do with our cell phones when we're traveling to and from the course? 
That is a true story. Yes, um, Outward Bound Canada is tech free. Um, other than you know, we we obviously tech, tech we our instructors our instructional teams will have the ability to communicate with the base, um, but we really value that time away from technology, um, and we find it it's it's easier to connect with people, um, and it's 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 it really. Um, it's it's nice to turn off and it's nice to kind of just be in the moment and and be with nature and 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 not to not be able and just have just connect on a deeper level yeah and there's going to be lots to do yeah. throughout the day too like initially it, there is and even with you know some of our adult courses <laughs> the adults that are more reluctant to like <laughs> um but um you know there is that initial i mean self harm is so much a part of our lives right it's always attached to us and to let that go can be quite a big moment. Absolutely. Um, you know, and it, it can be quite anxiety provoking mm -hmm. for some kids because they're used to being attached to that all the time. But, um, you know, once you get out there, once you get over that first few days, there's so much to do and see, and you're going to be, you know, going and, and it, it, it provides you time to make human to human connection yeah. instead of connection through technology. Great. Um, just a reminder, if you do have any um, questions to pop them in the Q&A box. I did just see a question. Um, I was 20 minutes late to logging into this meeting. Is there a recording of the session or can I get more information emailed to me? Yes, uh, we will be sharing around via email to everyone who registered for the session a recording so you can feel free to watch it later and um, you, you really miss a lot in those first 20 minutes. So make sure you take you take a watch after the session. Um, all right, back up to our questions about programs. Um, someone has a very specific question. Do you need to know how to white water canoe to do the white water course? You do not know how to white water canoe to do the white water course. You do need to have a some sort of a comfort. You definitely have to have be comfortable in the water. Yeah. You, because in a white water course, you're going to be in the water almost as much as you're out of the water sometimes, depending on where you're playing and what you're learning. Um, so it is definitely a, a step up in adventure and challenge from a yeah. black water course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that um, that's that progression where we, you, you, we will show you the skills that you show your uh, your kid the skills to in order to to kind of safely navigate rapids and stuff like that. So, but yeah, a comfort in water is pretty pretty important. In white water trips. Yeah. So. Awesome. Um, another question here. This is a bit different than the ones we've had before. So, someone said that they read a lot about forest fires in the news and this last spring and last summer, obviously it's probably likely um, that that might continue into the future. So how does that factor into our programs? Great question. Um, well, we, uh, we we have a whole, we have a, a whole risk management team that is, pro this is probably, you know, unfortunately is, is, is one of our chief concerns these days. So we are monitoring um, forest fires um, at all times during the tripping season. Um, we, um, and we we have in the past had to actually move. We, we're saying we've had to move a course not in the field, but we've had to move it before the prior to get, prior to going in the field to a safer location. Um, so it does happen. Um, but uh, again, with the with the with the coverage, the the instructional team has the has the the ability to be notified of you know fires of concern. And those uh, and those things, and and we will help them logistically to navigate, you know, coming out of the field and moving to a different location. Um, one of the new things that we introduced um, in the Rockies courses last year are we send in portable AQI monitors. Well, you know, with uh, there's been you know obviously a concern with forest fires and concern with uh, smoke. So we we have daily monitoring of uh, smoke, and we will. Again, that would be another reason why we would, you know, potentially move a group because the smoke, you know, was was too bad um, and it was unhealthy and um, and basically, yeah. So. yeah. AQI is air quality index. Oh, thanks, Laura. Yeah. And um, we do have a wildfire policy on our website mm -hmm. too. If you go under, um, I can't remember what the tab is. I think it's talks about risk, but there is a piece on there that talks about our wildfire. 
policy as well, if you want to read it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, on to our next question. So where is the best place to see interviews with past participants or stories of past participants on the program, stories of accomplishment, triumphs, and perhaps overcoming any intimidation of joining? Uh, I can steal that answer mm -hmm. from you, Laura and Pete. Um, the best place would be to check out our social media. We regularly um, post videos from our participants, testimonials, describing their experiences. We also link off to our blog where we have a ton of our alumni who've written about their experience and their story. So no matter what you prefer, if you prefer to watch a video, read a long, a long story, a, a short story, we've got it all. So yeah, I would say head to our social media pages. We're at Outward Bound Canada on everything, Instagram, Facebook, x slash twitter um linkedin we're all there um and we're also on youtube if you'd prefer to to go straight to a video yeah there's lots of youtube videos up there of past mm -hmm. participants and you really get to see a lot of um what our courses are they've broken out into regions there's information there about you know what for an outward bound course and lots of information on the youtube platform yeah Uh, we've gone through a lot of the questions. We're getting towards the end. There's a couple more, but if you do have some that you've just been sitting on and you want to make sure they get answered, please pop them in the Q&A box um, soon so we can make sure we get to them before the end of the session. Um, <laughs> which course would you send your kids on? Do you have a favorite? <laughs> I have sent my kids on Outward Bound courses, so I can tell you that. Um, my kids have done a 21 day tomography course in Northern Ontario. Um, I've had my kids do sea kayaking on the West Coast. I've had my, my, my other one came back twice and did the Rocky Mountains, the white water in the Rocky Mountains. And to be quite honest, the Rocky Mountain one, I think had the best pictures that came home. Um, they had a really great time on that one. Um, that one was a, a backpacking and white water course together. So, um, you know, both of those elements, they love the white water and they love the backpacking. Yeah. And uh, as a Vancouver Islander, I'm a, I'm a bit biased to the 21 day surf and sea kayak trip. So that's, uh, I think that's the, the ultimate kind of West Coast adventure for me. So. Yeah, my son did that one and yeah. loved it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I should mention Pete is also the head of our Western Canada program, so it's a little <laughs> bit biased when it comes to program choice. I would have been That's really true. surprised if he chose an Ontario one. Unfortunately, our head of Eastern Canada isn't here to kind of prop up her part of the region, but do take Pete's Pete's advice with a grain of salt. And I've been a participant on Outward Bound courses, and I've done Ontario and BC, and my Ontario course was fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Laura. <laughs> Um, okay, we've got one more question here. Uh, someone's asking about the food on course. Um, That's great. What's it like? How does it how does it get there? What can you tell us about the food on programs? Well, yeah, that's a great question, and it's a it's a little different in every region, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I would start with the Rockies uh, because it's you know we're 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 we're, we're quite weight conscious, you know, um, and uh, so things are things are smaller, dehydrated. Um, but we really, we really factor, we can factor in any allergies, any dietary, um, any, any of those concerns. Uh, so that's probably the biggest thing. Um, and then I think um, maybe going to Ontario, you know, especially with a flat water trip um, or a white water trip, I mean, there's portaging. So again, we kind of keep that in mind um, uh, as far as weight, uh, what you'd be carrying. Um, and sea kayaking is, um, we, we only have a certain amount of, uh, space to pack uh pack in the boats but the food is good um it's it, it's uh as i said as i mentioned it's 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 thought out um as far as taking in people's allergies and dietary considerations um and uh what else do i want to say i think that there's a there's a good there's a there's a nice variety and yeah yeah they're 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 fun and easy to cook um yeah, yeah. we had a new food provider in um in uh, the Rocky Mountains this year, and she sent me a sample menu, and oh my gosh, I'm like, I want to go just for the food. Yeah, um, it looked fantastic what they were eating, and we do do resupply too. Like in the Rocky Mountains, you are conscious you're going to be carrying a backpack, and it's going to be about 50 pounds yeah. of weight, give or take, yeah. on your back. You're going to be well, especially when you start out with the food. <laughs> yeah. So they do do a resupply on those longer ones as well, so that you will. 
get a, a resupply of food, at least one week supply. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And on our three week sea kayaking trip, we can't, we don't have the ability to pack all that food in. So they actually get a resupply as well. So, yeah. um, but yeah, I, I, the, the food is what you would expect at home. Um, uh, some of it is a little new to some of the students, but uh, yeah, really it's, uh, I, I think it's quite good. Yeah. And again, with food allergies and food sensitivities, um, you know, we need to know that in advance so that mm -hmm. we can talk to the food provider and provide a menu that would accommodate those. Yeah. Too. Yeah. And we are nut free. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Great. Well, this is your last chance. If anyone's got any burning questions, your last chance to pop them in the chat or the Q&A box. Um, but thank you so much, Laura and Pete, for um, running us through what makes a Network Bound program so special and for answering all the burning questions that people popped into the chat. Um, thank you, Sarah. I don't, <laughs> I don't see any, any last minute ones sneaking in, but if you do have one um, that you think of after the session, please feel free to email um, info at outwardbound.ca and we'll be sure to answer it or give us a call. Um, but as Pete did mention, uh, if for sticking around towards the end, we do have a special surprise. Um, you folks in this session are the first to know that on next Friday, we will be having a 24 hour discount um, on our all of our programs. That's 15% off a program that's two weeks or longer. Um, so some of the wonderful high school credit ones that Laura ran through at the start, um, the discount will be applied against. Uh, or it's 5% off um, one week programs. So the ones in, on, in Toronto, but also at our wilderness programs as well. Uh, you just have to submit your application on the 24th. Uh, and so the way that you access that is by uh, looking at our social media accounts where we will post the promo codes um, either the day of or the day before. And then you can use that at when you uh, submit your registration and you will get the discount. So you are the first people to uh, to know about this. So make sure that you keep an eye to yeah. our social media accounts. The other thing to know about the high school credit as well is there is an extra fee, a $200, $250 fee for the high school credit, but then the course itself becomes tax-free. So you don't have to pay taxes, of course. So just to let you know that as well, because some people question that. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for adding that in, Laura. So thank you so much again, everyone, for joining us this evening. Uh, like I mentioned, a recording will be emailed to everyone after the session is over in the coming days. Um, and I hope you all have a great evening. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.